Petricucci 65, Etna Comic, and Steamed Hams. So super early in the week, I did a little comic, and I was very pleased with how it turned out, to the point I didn't do an awful lot for the rest of the week. Uh, it involves Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z and Etna from the Diskaya franchise. What is Diskaya? It's a Japanese RPG uh, with a focus on comedy and grinding levels. I've played all five main games in the series. I am a fan of Nipponichi's work, including other franchises. And these characters may work their way into Smiley shows. So Etna's effectively like a, a little girl who is a demon, who is super strong. And I like the juxtaposition of her slight frame to her being incredibly physically resilient so I had this idea in my head of her punching a, like a, a giant safe door clean through a wall and I actually went ahead and drew it can you imagine I had an idea in my head and I got it out of my head it must be Christmas or something right that's <laughs> that's the closest you're getting to a Christmas special right there it won't be like last year so yeah that bottom page panel there of her in the pose with the safe in the back of the wall that's what i thought of and everything else is just just working around it so yeah and then vegeta shows up and everybody wins it looks like it's all done on one page but it's really a mishmash of multiple layers um <laughs> and then i decided that i wanted this to be some fourth wall stuff and someone else was drawing the comic because that's always the best way to to kind of dis uh, deflect responsibility for something, make it someone else's fault, even though you're technically the the arbiter of that. So M. Bison is the the artist responsible for this Etna comic. Yes. Uh, and while I've been getting a bit more mangery with my work recently, I went all Jim Lee with this picture and actually tried to give him teeth that look like teeth by focusing on like the gum line and stuff. Yeah, so I coloured a couple of the pages, uh, the first one and the second one. And that fist in the bottom panel actually kind of looks like a fist, so maybe all that handwork, well, not all that handwork I did, but that handwork I did a couple of weeks ago has helped me tighten things up just a little. Um, it does remind me that when you add colour, you, you kind of, then you have to add the panels, and then you have to add the speech bubbles, and soon you end up with something that's got to look professional to a certain extent. And I'm, you know, I liked just doing the this comic all in one go and then walking away. So where am I going to put it? You know, I've got a flicker where the Holy Crapola stuff is uh, that me, James, and Adam did a while ago, just so I can, like, show it to other people if I'm trying to get them to do something with me so they know what I'm talking about and they, their expectations aren't all over the place based on stuff, the words coming out of my mouth. Yeah, so I did some headshots of some of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms characters as well, just, you know, to have stuff to talk about. Uh, so Liu Bei, who has to have the, the giant ears, and yeah, I mean, the, I, the idea with these things was to, was to just try and catch, capture a bit of the personality without like worrying too much about detail. So Cao Cao is supposed to look kind of evil, but kind of resourceful, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit top down under the nose, because, you know, he's the guy at the top. Ah, good, I really need to have a look at the hats everybody wears in that time period and figure how that how those things fit on their head. So Juge Leong looking kind of shady behind the fan because you know he's always portrayed as this kind of smooth, easygoing dude, but you know what? He he <laughs> he had a lot of people burned alive. That's kind of that was his military tactics 101. So yeah, war. It's it's a it's a hell of a business. And yeah, so I just coloured it like he was at the Battle of Chobi, where the greatest, maybe the greatest fire attack in, in Chinese military history took place. At least it's one of the most famous, and they've they've made movies about it that have made it to the West. Uh, it's amazing how easy it is to apply colour, and it looks like it maybe was, was hard work, but it isn't. And yeah, this, this quick Guan Yu sketch is just about how like I'm I'm constructing faces and stuff in that manga style with with like super basic you know no nose uh, line for the mouth don't worry about the lips 
things like that. That's kind of where my skill level sits, I think. Uh, you know, here I have Sincere with, with like Manga Mouth, where you just shade in, in like the edges uh, and show you with that little silly blush thing. And that kind of uh, visual storytelling works quite well for me as a cartoonist. And yeah, I was going to give an honourable mention to the best Steamed Hands uh, parody I've seen, but it was so good, i got to talk about it at length. Yes, it's a Metal Gear Solid parody, but it... It had the Konami logo with like Homer doing in time to the to the 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 noises. It you know he used these cutaways during the Steamed Ham Simpsons footage to do the the Metal Gear Solid thing where they show real footage. Like I think he's probably even used the right font uh, for the subtitles. I mean, like anyone's gonna bother and check, but it it looks legit enough for a guy who doesn't give a fuck. You know, I think. Steamed Hams is about three minutes, so he doubled the length. And then even at the end had that kind of Metal Gear Solid after credits thing. And he used, like, Mo and Bart Simpson phoning him up. The whole Seymour Butts joke. So th there was a lot of quality in this. Uh, I could probably <laughs> devote a whole batch of Gucci to this. So what do I need to do going forward? Yeah, maybe just play a little less Total War Warhammer. It's a bit Moorish, and suddenly it's it's tomorrow when I play that game. It just ugh, one more turn turns into it's three hours later, and then more more hilarious bisons. Yes, that's how it needs to be. That's what the Smiley Show is, and and ugh, that's that's what the YouTube channel needs to be as well. So let's get on with it. No promises for next week, but yeah, we'll we'll get there. All right, so that brings us to the end of Petrucci sixty five, and I'll see you next time.